Thank you, Bill. It's good to have you back. Mary Grove just came over to me and said, feels like real church with the organ going, doesn't it? I said, either that or Halloween, one of the two. <laughs> Good morning and welcome. My name is Elisa Lacozzi, and I'm the pastor to the beloved community known as Guilford Community Church. It's so good to have you here on the sixth Sunday of Easter. I, um, I have to tell you a little story. I was at the eye doctor this week, and um, in a room waiting for my eyes to dilate, and outside, the scene plays out. The, one of the employees comes by and says, so-and-so didn't pick up their Easter basket. No, nope, too late now. I poked my head out and I said, actually, <laughs> it's still Easter. <laughs> Wait, gets better. Young woman behind the counter who obviously works there says, actually, it's, it's coming up on the sixth Sunday of Easter. And I looked at her and I said, where do you go to church? <laughs> she named some Episcopal church and I said, you tell your pastor to give you a gold star. Not every day that someone says, oh yeah, it's the sixth Sunday of Easter. I have a hard time keeping track. Anyway, so I want to extend a welcome to all of you this morning, especially those of you joining us online. And as we always say, although you aren't here in this space, you are always here in this space, in our hearts. So let us join together in all the many ways we can with the joy of being together online or here in person to gather worshiping God, offering our prayers in our hearts and reflecting on God's word to us this day. Friends, let us keep creating new ways of being the church, and being the church family, because we know that being the church has everything to do with loving each other. Whether that be celebrated and affirmed in this sanctuary, lovingly tended for over 250 years on Zoom or YouTube for some, on the streets in solidarity in the fight for justice for others, or on a hillside with a friend. Let us gather be the church, the vibrant church, with a welcome wide enough for all. Some, some folks today celebrate Mother's Day and I'm always really careful because it can be a really tender thing for lots of people. But there is one mother we all have Mother Earth. So I think um, let's extend our blessings and our grace and our gratitude to that mother that holds us all. So as we gather this morning, let us acknowledge and honor this earth that is home to us all, this land we occupy by honoring and acknowledging those original people who belong to this land, the homelands of the Sokoki Abenaki, who have lived in relationship with this land for thousands of years and are still living here today. We offer them our gratitude and our respect, our repentance and hope and solidarity with them. It is a holy communion we share of life on earth, of past and present, of pain and reconciliation, of mystery and majesty. Let us begin. So as we continue into this sacred time, I invite those of you who are joining us online, if you have a candle, to light that now. I invite those of us here to invite the Holy Spirit into this space, into the space in our hearts as we take a deep breath. Peace, be still. Peace. Be still. Peace. Be still. Let us join together in the call to worship. Look for God in this place. It is here given for you out of God's absolute love for you. Peace. 
Peace be to you all. And also to you. Amen. Our first hymn is number 426, and I think it's also, oh no, it's not printed in your bulletin. <laughs> number 426, I've got peace like a river. Please rise and body your spirit. This morning's prayer of invocation opening prayer is entitled Saturday Morning at 10 a.m. by Jan Richardson, and it's being read for us this morning by Tom Yonner. Yeah, I was a little foggy this morning when I looked at this and I thought, wait, I thought it's Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> really, truly, that's not very loud. <laughs> Oh, it was funny because it was really what my honest impression of what I read. Saturday morning, 10 a.m. by Jan Richardson. Justice and peace meet at a cafe, sit together, hands folded around steaming cups, heads bent over the paper. They are not taking in the news of the world with sorrowing eyes and clucking tongues. They are instead planning their itinerary, plotting their map, looking for the places where they might slip in. Their fingers touch, release, touch again as they read, moving with the half-aware habits that come only with long living alongside. They have met, parted, met again on countless mornings like this one, torn and taken by turns. They put the paper aside. They brush away the crumbs. They talk quietly. They know there is work to do. But they order one more cup. There is savoring they must do before the saving begins. They lean in, barely touching across the table for a kiss that makes a way, a world. Wow. 
Friends, we worship a God who loves us abundantly, whose unending love is always available to us without doing a single thing. So let us speak the truth of our lives, asking for God's help where we need it. Let us share this prayer and confession together. Lord, you know how easy it is for us to sit here, tethered to our darkness and fear. We get bound up by chains of mistrust. We dare not to hope for so many times before we have been disappointed. So we sit here and wonder where you are. We are not unlike the disciples who wander also, who fear. Lord, come to us in our darkness. Flood us with your powerful light of love and mercy. Help open our eyes to the good news of your eternal glory. Give to us visions of a place in which love and hope will reign. Forgive our stubborn resistance to your mercy and your love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Friends, our words of assurance this morning are to be sung. Please join in as you can. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger. time. Don't be afraid. My love is stronger. My love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid. My love is stronger. Our first anthem this morning is Turn, 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 of course, by Pete Seeger and arranged by Peter Amidon. To everything turn, 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 there is a season turn, 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 and the time to every purpose under heaven. Thank you. 
We already got some candidates. Anybody who wants to come forward who defines himself as young at heart, or just plain old young. You can need the stand. Oh, yeah, you can need Okay, got it. Good morning. Well, let's just put those to the side for right now, and we can check them out afterwards, okay? Because I want to look at them, too. <laughs> um, in keeping with Pastor Lisa's theme of Mother Earth, uh, and that turn, turn, turn is just so perfect for celebrating this season and one of the things that I think about a lot during May is all the mother and father Robins. They are busy right now, aren't they? They're very, very busy. I, I just have to tell you guys this amazing thing that's happening at our house right now. We have a woodshed and right that there's a big opening and on, right on the other side of the woodshed, Kenny, my husband, has put up some planks. And so we started noticing in early May, these robins were, we, you know, I'm not sure, one, two, three, flying in and out, in and out. Oh, I, we know what they're doing, right? So we took a ladder, I w went with my grandkids, and we climbed up really carefully. You're not going to believe this. Not only was there a nest, there were five nests. What? I am not kidding. One, two, three, four, five. One nest now has three little robin eggs in it. But has anyone ever seen that before? No. You look it up on the internet. You can I, find some stories. I see. I saw once uh, a um, a hawk nest. Oh, you did. In the middle of a city. It was like. Did you all see that? Desi just said that he saw a hawk's nest in the middle of the city. And it was like on a like a it was on a high building. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could yeah. see it, and I saw hawks flying in and out. In and out. and Jake, were you gonna say something? I saw eagles with a chick inside. Three chicks. Oh, what? Lucky you. That's really special. We have an incubator with 
chef with ten uh, little baby chicken eggs. Yeah. That's oh, pretty exciting. Oh, 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 it, I think it died. In about a week. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a story um, that I wrote um, a number of years ago. Actually, this I wrote it for my grandchildren, and it's about a mother robin. And for Desi and Jacob, I want you. When you hear the story, it's definitely a story about a mother robin and her eggs, but there's something else going on in this story, and when the story's over, maybe you can tell me what you, what you thought about the story, okay? Desi's going to read it from a different copy, and I'm just going to show you all the pictures. Cool. So, um, and Jacob, I need you to identify where the robin is in every page, okay? Are you ready for that job? Are you ready for your job, Desi? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Like, where's Waldo? Yeah, exactly. Where's <laughs> 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 Waldo? Where's Waldo? That's one of my names. Okay. Homespun. Homespun. Is written and illustrated by Sue Owings. <laughs> it's time to build the second floor, said Gramps in early May. The twins are turning four. You know, I think I'll start today. So Jacob's, Jacob, find the, see if you can find the okay. Robin. Where's the robin in this page? Can you see him? Her? Can you find her, Catherine? I see it. There you go. OK. <laughs> Next page. Lagoda and Neve. Nevea. Nevea. Nev. Waved goodbye for Gramps had work to do. He'll cut down branches, trunks, and vines to build the fort like new. Oh, there she is. Mm -hmm. Okay, next page. It's almost done. Come take a look. What will it now become? A fort, a truck, a ship at sea? A castle fit a castle fit for me? Where's the where's the robin? Oh, right there. There we go. She's keeping an eye on things. Oh yeah. Time to finish my special nest, thought Robin in the spring. When gazing at the perfect spot it made the mama sing. Well, I guess it's, this page is obvious, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. it's right there. And there's a nest, too. Right? Oh, where's the nest? Right there. There we go. That's hiding. But wait a minute. The nest, I think, is inside the fort. Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> so off she flew into the field to find more twigs and twine. She'll, she'll weave a sturdy robin's nest and it will be just fine. And you can definitely see the robin. Definitely. <laughs> oh, but where, what do you think she's going to get for the nest? Mostly sticks and things. Yeah, and how about these hay bales over here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah could be. The birthday came. The the friends arrived, and all were so impressed. The twins climbed up and out, in and out, with each, each and every guest. Mm, where is she now? Oh, she's hiding. She's hiding. I wonder what she's thinking about all these kids. Hmm. Look, Neve. No. Look, Neve.
Nev cried. There's a, there's a robin's nest tucked in the cor- corner post. She n- nestled in to her delight. Four eggs she saw up close. Robin is not in this page, just the eggs. Four eggs. Four eggs. My friends, said Grimp, we need to leave. The robin needs her space. We, we promise, Grimps, we'll sneak away and find another place. You see it? Where's robin? In the nest. Yep, she needs her quiet right now, right? Every day for the next two weeks, the mother huddles in. The mighty fort protects her f- from sun and rain and wind. Chicks. It's easy to see. <laughs> right. One day, while near the fort, Loka, Lakota hears heard a peep. A cautious, a cautious peep up close revealed chicks crying. Cheep, cheep, cheep. Two weeks passed and the, ne- the nest was cramped. The, the, field, the fieldlings had no the fledglings had no space. Then quickly, in a swirl of wings, they flew with scattered haste. Time to leave. All that's left was an empty nest. The chicks had learned to fly, and now the twins could uh, romp, romp and slide, or snuggle way up high. Oh, yeah. Now, if you ever build a home, perhaps you'll find it true that someday someone might need to share that home with you. The end. So what do you think Lakota and Nevaeh had to do on their birthday? They had to, um, they had to, uh, they had to make, leave something that was made for them so a, raw, so a bird could move in and have their space for, for a month so their babies could grow up and learn how to fly. Yeah, sometimes it's kind of tough to have to share, right? Oh, yeah, I know that. But (laughs) we do all need to learn how to share, Mm -hmm. right? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, as we celebrate Mother of us all, and all the glorious ways in which she teaches us about how to love, how to let go, how to make space. Nest in our hearts. Help us to grow. Amen. Shall we bless the children? As you journey, as you journey, may you know, may you know, love and hope go with you, love and hope go with you, wherever you go, wherever you go. Our one and only scripture reading this morning is a passage from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 27, read for us by Perrin Scott. (laughs) 
If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. May God add a blessing. Our next hymn is number 335, Dona Nobis Pachum. Please rise and body our spirit.
a happy music director who can get up there and make that happen. <laughs> May the peace of Christ be with you all. So we say that every week, but what do we mean when we say that? We offer it in many forms. We offer it by a hug or a kiss on the cheek, bumping elbows, fist bumps, you know, some leftovers from heavy COVID times, <laughs> ASL or the hippie version. But what are we trying to say to each other when we say that? So here we are in the sixth week of Easter that season between Easter and Pentecost. And next Sunday is a Sunday we would normally celebrate the Ascension, which is when Jesus finally leaves the earth in any form, where the resurrected Christ leaves the disciples. So although we haven't been tied to the lectionary, if we were, we would know that over the last few weeks, Jesus first has been showing up, right, and saying some extra goodbyes. And in the Gospel of John, we have been hearing excerpts from what is known as Jesus' farewell discourses, his last bits of instruction to the disciples before he leaves their presence and faces horrific torture and death. Now he is risen and is preparing to ascend, so no more sneaking up on anybody in the garden, no more showing up for long walks, no more breakfast on the beach, so you would think that we won't be paying extra attention to every word that Jesus is saying. I invite you to pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Loving and gracious God. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday you heard Claire talk about God's house is a mansion, a place for all of us, a place of love for all of us. This week we're talking about peace. How are the two tied? What does it mean? In two weeks we'll be celebrating Memorial Day. That's a time we officially put aside to remember those who have died serving our country. Those who have died, we imagine, with a dream of peace in their hearts. Now, Memorial Day was originally known as Decoration Day. Anybody know why? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they put flags on the graves to remember those who had died. A part of remembering Memorial Day is remembering times of war, times of horrific acts against humanity, times of domination and oppression. When we think of peace as the opposite of war, and of course it is. And we tend to think of wishing for, praying for, even maybe working for peace in other countries, <clears throat> countries like Ukraine, for sure. But we don't tend to think about wars happening right here in our own country. We think of peace as the opposite of war, and of course it is. But that peace is the peace that the world gives not the peace of Christ. The peace that Jesus leaves us is not the peace of Rome, the empire, or the world. It is the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ is radically subversive of the peace of the empire because the peace of Christ is based on doing no harm. The peace that Christ gives centers those who are most often harmed by the empire. Jesus gives us true peace, a peace that is not waged through the sword, but through love. And remember what Cornel West says, justice is what love looks like in public. All one needs to do is turn on the, the news for a mere few seconds to understand that we are indeed at war, right here. At one count, 540 proposed bills 
which would significantly harm and life threaten people in the LGBTQ community, especially trans youth. <coughs> Bills that would affect safety in schools, freedom of speech and expression, <coughs> public accommodations, and access to life-saving health care. And what about our response to the ever-continuing attack on black and brown bodies? I hold especially today Jordan Neely in my heart, a 30-year-old black man who struggled with home insecurity, who was choked to death on a New York subway train after he was desperately pleading for money. Or as Reverend Jackie Lewis, senior pastor of Middle Church in New York City says, you cannot follow someone who proclaimed blessed are the poor while simultaneously arguing that Jordan Neely deserved to die because he asked for food too loudly. You might have noticed on your bulletin that one of the quotes I have from Doris Day, peace begins when everybody is fed. Too often our cries for peace only mean a call to keep the status quo. Too often they are meant to silence those whose lives are being extinguished, who are at the very least are the ones who are the targets of harm. They are meant to preserve our own comfort and power over those for whom true peace or even a safe trip to the grocery store seems like an impossibility. No justice, no peace. It's a chant I first heard when I attended one of my first protests back in the 90s. Linguist Ben Zimmer writes that the use of the slogan, no justice, no peace, during protests goes back as far as 1986, tied to the killing of Michael Griffith, who was a Trinidadian immigrant. He and three friends, all black, were assaulted by a mob of white youth in New York City. Griffith fled the attackers, but Led on, ran onto a highway and was struck and fatally killed by a passing car. So the meaning of no justice, no chief peace may change depending on whether you're talking about it or the speaker is being conditional or conjunctive. The linguistics thing here. After 2014 shooting of Tamir Rice, journalist Glenn Ford wrote this. More than just a threat against power, the slogan brings clarity of purpose to the participants in the movement. If the extinguishing structures of governance and social organization cannot possibly provide justice for black people, then those structures must be pushed aside or there will be no true peace. By contrast, in the conjunctive interpretation, one might say this, a lack of justice has resulted in a lack of peace. Heavy hearts now lack peace because of the lack of justice in our nation. And from this we get no, K-N-O-W, no justice, K-N-O-W, no peace. One truly cannot exist without the other. <coughs> so back to our, back to the reason why we're here. Imagine for a minute you're a disciple. Here was the Messiah, the one who would deliver them, the one they believe would deliver the whole world, the one whom they had pinned all their hopes on, on their lives. And now he was leaving for good. And so Jesus told them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Why? Because Jesus know, knew what was about to hit the fan. And their hearts were about to be really troubled. But the disciples don't want to buy into the peace of the world. In fact, they want to subvert it. Following Jesus isn't always easy. For example, sometimes the political rulers of the day will come for you. They'll try and strip away your human right to have agency over your own body. 
or they'll try to fine or even jail you if you support a trans youth being fully their beautiful selves. Jesus teaches us that discipleship isn't always safe. Rather, discipleship is a mission with risks. This piece isn't a kumbaya, let's all get along. No. This kind of peace is risky. In fact, it may cause some divisions among your family, or your neighborhood, or your nation. Jesus is assuring his companions that this imminent departure is not abandonment, but rather a move that will make a way for even deeper intimacy. Jesus wants to leave his disciples with a profound sense of confidence and equanimity. In a word, peace. John writes in Greek, of course, but in the background here is the ancient Hebrew notion of shalom. Not just an absence of conflict, but the presence of personal and communal wholeness and well-being. So the peace that Jesus brings, the shalom, that sense of well-being, is a peace that can only come with mutual indwelling, with that deep sense of intimacy and connection, with a deep sense of caring for one another's well-being, which includes their right to exist, not just to survive, but to thrive. I'm part of a group that meets every Monday mornings to sing online, started during COVID. And we learned a song, a peace song, and there was a rabbi present who shared that the word shalom can be translated several ways. Wholeness, fullness, ripeness, completion. So for me, a recovering perfectionist, long journey. This is spacious and lovely that it allows me and you and all of us to be works in progress, incomplete and in development, <clears throat> always learning. And simultaneously there is the promise that fullness and ripeness and completion is possible and is in a sense present even right now, even perhaps if we don't see it or feel it. So friends, peace be with you. So right on cue. Peace be in you. May we be seekers of peace, not the peace that the world gives, but Christ's peace in our own hearts and in the world. May we be agents of peace that surpass all violence, hatred, injustice, and fear. May we be at peace. May we be peace. Amen. Our next anthem is I Won't Turn Back by S. Witt Vincent. <laughs> Yeah.
Friends, this is the time in the service where I invite your prayers. Prayers of joy or celebration, prayers of concern or sorrow. And as always, if you are joining us online, you can write a prayer request in the comments section accompanying our live feed and our online host today. Fred will get those to me. When so much of our world is groaning with injustice and destruction, we are turned to God and to one another. We are not meant to carry the struggles of the world alone. And so in the spirit of collective embrace, may we share together in prayer for all the troubles our hearts. You are invited to offer the names of those who are in need of prayer at this time. Mary Paluski. Mary Julie Peterson and Margie Serkin. Julie Peterson and Margie Danny and Lisa. Grace Lee, Prayers for Catherine. Prayers for Robin's father, Paul Yazel. Prayers for Robin's father, Paul Yazel. Stephen. Prayers for the Ellis family. Prayers for the Sindel Ellis family. Thanks, Fred. Yes, Donna. Prayers for Tom and Nancy Ragel. Prayers for Joy Hayes. Al Prayers for Al Franklin. Diane. Joyce Larson. Prayers for Joyce Larson. A parent and her mother as a parent goes to her mother. Mm, parent and her mom. And prayers for all members of the congregation who are recovering from various surgeries or healing from various accidents. We have a collection right now. <laughs> prayers for the people of Ukraine, Syria, and Sudan, and for all countries torn by war and hate. 
Prayers of healing for those with physical and mental ailments, may they be, may they be whole again. Prayers of, okay, and then we're going to the next one. Okay, so let's continue on. Just as we are not meant to shoulder the world's pain alone, we are equally invited to delight with one another in joys that sustain us, for the beauty that grows around us and for all good things. So now you're invited to share some gratitudes, Catherine. Chris was a wonderful sunlight and wind, and Stefan was wonderful music. Prayers for the beautiful sunlight and weather, and prayers for Stefan and his music. Amen to that. Gratitudes for Bill and the organ. Gratitudes for Bill and the organ. Mary Alice. For the apple blossoms in the orchard. Mm, for the apple blossoms in the orchard. Robin? And the honeybees. Robin, did you have one? Yeah, um, I like gratitudes for the art lords from Afghanistan who come to live in this community mm. and yeah. offer such a rich, um, um, such a, a wonderful, they're a wonderful gift to this community. Mm. Prayers of gratitude for the Afghan, you said art lords? Yeah. Mm. Prayers of joy for the beautiful weather. We'll get a couple on those. <laughs> so friends, let us gather up all these prayers and add to it the prayer that Jesus taught us. I invite you to say this prayer in whatever way will help you embody its promise. And may we bring about one glimpse of the kingdom of God, a kingdom where all are fed and free, where all are whole, we all know they are holy and loved and beloved. And yes, you can join hands. Let us pray. Our Creator, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Looks empty, doesn't it? There's magic here. Even before you reach for the gifts that you can offer from your wallet, this is full to the brim and spilling over with all the other gifts that you bring. So I invite you to bring them and put them in this now for your hearts. This morning's offering will now gratefully be received.
Let us bless these offerings. Gracious God, you are a loving parent, imparting wisdom to those who love and follow you. As Jesus demonstrated to his disciples, you offer the immeasurable peace of an eternal home. We praise your name in the comfort of this peace and place these tithes and offerings before you. Multiply these gifts so that those seeking to establish peace in this world will feel your guiding hand. We pray in the name of the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. And as you are still standing, and since it is today's theme, I invite you to offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. These two be with you, Emma. <laughs> what a pretty color dress you have. I love it. Since you're still standing, let us remain standing and sing our final hymn, number 363, In the Midst of New Dimensions.
may be seated. Hear these words of blessing as we depart this day. When everything good begins to feel out of reach, when collective change seems impossible, or hope is simply hard to find, Christ whispers peace, peace among us, not to dull our need to feel sorrow or to quell necessary conflict, but to remind us again of what is so easily forgotten. Evil has not overtaken us. Love is still alive. God is potential, always with us. With this peace that sustains, go with confidence. Amen. one quick announcement for me next Sunday um, is a lot of really great things and it just got the ante just got upped because I convinced Larry that he would be the perfect person to do faces of faith next Sunday so um, he's agreed to do that which is going to be great so next Sunday for worship service we will have faces of faith Larry Crockett um, sharing a minuscule piece of his amazing faith journey. Um, and I'll let the rest of the crew tell you the rest. Well, first of all, I'm going to put a damper on everything because the worship committee decided this week that in order to try to, to keep the service from getting too long and stretching into our beautiful summer days, we're going to try to avoid the big long lineup by having people submit their announcements ahead of time, making sure that they're all church related and uh, we'll have one person reading them and people who are making the announcement on paper can stand up and be identified. So that'll start next week. It's a good thing because I had to get the pie sale in one more time <laughs> before I go away. I'll be away next weekend, but we still have two weeks to collect money for box sets. If you have a cooler, you could bring on the day. If you also would like to work on the day at Doug Richmond's, and if you'd like to, we still can use more pies. We're going to be cutting up apples Friday morning and make this rhubarb coming and plenty of pie tins downstairs that are on the sink. And I ordered the fancy kind with the plastic tops. If you want to make like lemon meringue or custard pies, then and they're a little pricey. So I only got 10. But if they all, I'll put them this week before I go away. And so that's it. Short and sweet. It's not Valentine's Day, but it's Mother's Day and Father's Day and thinking of you and hello. Lots of cards downstairs for a $5 donation to the church. Please contribute. I'll go fast, Fred. Sorry, I didn't know. Um, I came in today with a quilt for the Christmas uh, fundraiser for the church. I know, it's May. 
Um, Judy got it done much earlier this year, and our hope is that we can get exposure out in the community of this quilt to a lot more people. So I have it downstairs. If you want to stop by and take a look, it is quite attractive. Hi, it's Mark Pie News. Downstairs in the freezer are bags of pie crust mix. They've got the butter, the Crisco, the salt, the flour, everything but the water in them. And this is the recipe that it is. Here's how to mix it with water, and here's how to roll it out. Um, keep it in the freezer. There's a stack of these instructions right next to the dough or the mix. You can keep it in your freezer until you're ready to use it. Don't mix it with water unless, it's only good for three days after being mixed with water in the refrigerator. So don't mix it up right when you get it. Keep it in your freezer. Thank you. We are now up to our third in our concert series. Next Sunday afternoon at 2.30, our usual time, there will be the Shirley Harris Crockett Memorial Concert. Larry Crockett has taken on quite a load next week. Yeah, yes. He's not yeah. only our main organizer of this event, he's brought together family, friends, our choir, uh, video archives, um, recordings. It's going to be, if, even if you never knew Shirley Crockett, I would recommend you come to this concert and bring a friend because it's an amazing story. 2.30 next Sunday afternoon. This Friday is my birthday. <laughs> awesome, Jacob. And thank you, Jacob, for tipping off the birthdays. <laughs> So Jacob is next Friday. Jacob, do you want to tell us how old you're going to be? Ten. Jacob's going to be ten next Friday. Carol. My birthday's tomorrow. Carol's oh, birthday's. Yeah. You're going to be ten too? Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Seventy-two. Seventy-two. Rachel. And Dwayne's birthday is also on Friday. Oh. Seventy-three. May nineteenth is a good day around here. Yeah. Go ahead, Sue. Ah, oh, your grandkids, 13 Thursday. Elizabeth. My brother-in-law, Brad Starr, will be 71 on Monday. Brother-in-law, 71. And Dang. we were away celebrating our son, Brent's 45th, our daughter-in-law, Jen's 44th, and our granddaughter, Thea, who's 14. Oh, well, tell Thea we said happy birthday. <laughs> Is that it? Great. Is that it? Let's sing. Okay. Happy birthday, happy birthday, we love you. Happy birthday, and may all your dreams come true. When you blow out the candles, one light stays aglow. It's the love light in your eyes where you go. Happy Sunday. Enjoy the beautiful weather. All right.